You know, when we want to go to the World Cup where it's most competitive, we send our best 11, right? When you send your second or third 11, you are bound to lose. You don't need to be told after the preliminaries that you're not going to make it very far. So that is why the top is very important to people like us, because we've seen what people do when they get the top right, putting the right people at the top. I have seen it by my exposure. And contrary to what people say, I have never been disengaged from politics. I've just not been playing partisan politics. There's no political development in this country that happened in the last 30 years that I did not partake in. And you know that because we started with channels, as a matter of fact, when China started. In fact, one of the most important video clip about my youthful participation in politics in 1993 came from Channel. And who was the young man interviewing Abiola on that day? John Moore. For example, has been pointed out that needs to be addressed. Yes. If Nigeria is to move uh, in the direction so many want it to move, is power supply. That's correct. How would you tackle that? So it's got to be a mix of power supply techniques. And technology is our friend in this regard. So we are at a miserable 3,000 megawatts of electricity right now. And this country is in need of at least 24,000 immediately for us to have some kind of grasp around electrical supply. And we are not talking about supply of electricity for people to fall asleep with fan and refrigerators alone. We need industrial supply, industrial level supply of electricity so that industries can rely on the national or regional grids to uh, have electricity. And one of the areas we want to tap into is solar energy. And, and we have African examples to follow. If you just do a small research, you find out that People in Morocco have done it so successfully that uh, Egypt just recently generated 17,000 megawatts of electricity that was let into their national grid. You know, it was what I was crying about when they said Nigeria's economy has surpassed that of South Africa, that without electricity, you are deceiving yourself because you don't even have enough electricity for kids who want to do their homework, to do their homework before they go to bed with. So if we go rapidly, you know, and we tap into gas and we tap into uh, hydro, uh, we tap into coal. Uh, I'm not a big fan of coal, but we have coal, and coal is still 10% of how U.S. is generating electricity. And you do so rapidly. Probably even more for a country like China. Yes, and you can get your electricity right. And the moment you get electricity right, your GDP will increase immediately, almost immediately and rapidly, and perhaps by a percentage that will surprise economists. So without getting electricity right, you can't even get security right. You can't get education right. You can't get health right. You can't get agriculture right. Because all of you know, imagine that we have electricity and the farmer is somewhere in Benue State where they call Nigeria the, you know, the food basket of the nation and they grow and they can preserve their tomatoes before they get to Lagos. And you don't have the huge post-harvest loss that we have. Or you have vehicles that can be powered by even electricity, that can drive them from Benue to Lagos in refrigerated, uh, refrigerated trucks, things are going to start getting all right. So electricity is major, but it's, it's going to need huge investment, it's going to need commitment, it's going to need focus, and I'm going to be the chief electricity officer of the country, <laughs> not the minister of uh, petroleum, because that's what every president has done. Because Petroleum is, of course, a slush fund source revenue. I need a president who wants, really wants to do work, something that will produce immediate results, and not the one who wants to have a title or being a minister of petroleum. Be the chief electricity officer of Nigeria or you know, the, the chief advocate of Light of Nigeria so that every section of this country will not be in darkness at night. You just need to see how bad we feel when you fly into Nigeria at night, and you just see a patch of Lagos dark, you know, and it's all over Nigeria because sometimes depending on where you're flying in from, you're entering from Kano and you're looking down and saying that 
this country is in darkness. It's, it's, it's terrible. But so that's why that's a major priority for us. But again, before electricity, we have security. Because for us to build infrastructure that will deliver on our electrical promises, we need to have security so that people can work 24 7. It's going to require you know, people working 24 7, putting all the pieces together, drawing the agenda. And would, would, you, would you be thinking of state police, for example, now that people surviving on less than one dollar? It is a ranking no country wants, a first place position for the most people living in extreme poverty. Nigeria has now overtaken India in the less than envious top spot. But it is Africa's second largest economy and oil rich. So for a land so richly blessed, why are Nigerians not reaping the benefits of the wealth? Extreme poverty means people surviving on less than $1.90 a day. In Nigeria, it grows by six people every minute. 87 million Nigerians, or nearly 50% of the population, live below the breadline. The figures come from the world poverty clock. It is counting down to 2030, measuring progress on the UN's major sustainable development goal to eradicate poverty worldwide. The problem literally grows every day. Our population happens to be the largest in Africa and one of the largest in the world. And in the next two decades, we will be, uh, some say the fourth, some say the third most populous country. Nigeria's government rejects the data modeling by the world poverty clock, but there is no denying the country's inequality. Extreme wealth is in the hands of a few. And despite being the largest oil producer in Africa, successive Nigerian governments have struggled to lift living standards. President Muhammadu Buhari took office in 2015, vowing to improve the lives of ordinary citizens. But the manufacturing, transportation and agriculture sectors have not recovered from the 2016 recession after a drop in oil prices. The unemployment rate is at 19%. The youth rate is 33%. Buhari's anti-corruption campaign has clawed back $1.6 billion in misused funds. But his critics argue that barely scratches the surface. And although he's credited with pushing back the terror group Boko Haram, insecurity persists in the northeast the fact is the battle against poverty in africa and the world cannot be won unless there is progress in poverty reduction in nigeria you fail the exam you do you never fail you go follow if you copy who fail the exam what will you get fail failure who copy failure with five failure awaiting him? Of these kind of problems. That's why we have something we acronym as Spicer Heat, which is about the security we're talking about, which is about power, electricity, for us to really develop. We need lots of electricity in this country. We need energy. And we need to diversify from solar, nuclear, and so on. We need to have infrastructure. I always laugh when I see these government build roads and think that's where infrastructure ends. I'm sure recently you've seen images and footage of farms in many parts of the country, both middle belt and down to the northern part of the country, inundated in waters because of floods. These are lack of dams, lack of actually retreating of our rivers actually so that we can make use of the water for irrigation, and some other things. And then we also need infrastructure in education, transportation. So this is what our party is, is going to tackle. We also need to have a very robust economy that can meet the challenges of uh, the globalization we see. We need health. <laughs> this is where I work for most of my adult life. I've been working on corridors of our hospital. Uh, the situation of healthcare in this country is nowhere near good. 
and to even worsen the matter, some of our best trained minds are always on their way outside the shores of this country to practice their skills. So we have not been able to retain them. We have not been able actually to even train more. So diseases are actually happy. And you can name them, I know, tuberculosis is one. Nigeria is the capital.